Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. of victory for our God. Alleluia. Thank you. 
Almighty God of the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus, thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must be put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must be put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
name of Jesus. Amen. So it was the early morning of a brand new day, at the very beginning of a brand new week, at the early dawn of a brand new world. It was a morning that saw the greatest, truest, and most beautiful thing that ever happened, Jesus the Christ risen from the dead, and everybody missed it. They were at home because they didn't know what else to do. They were at home because they were paralyzed with grief. They were at home because their only hope had been crucified. And all that was left was to wait for death to come and get them too. It is hard to blame them. Death very much seemed to have the upper hand on Friday. When Jesus bowed his head and yielded up his spirit, when the sun stopped shining and the earth shook, when the stone was rolled over the tomb and all their dreams for the future were trapped inside, but this morning is a mark of for a new and unending day. The sun has risen and shines more brightly than ever. The stone is rolled back and the earth is no longer trembling, but rejoicing. For Jesus has passed through suffering and death. He has emerged from his quarantine robust, healthy, whole, and lives again forever. Now all of this, it is wonderful news for Jesus. But the good news for you is that Easter is not only for Jesus. Like everything that he accomplished on Good Friday, Easter is for you. And so this day actually means more than the fact that Jesus is risen indeed. It means that sin, death, and hell are not risen indeed. It means that death is swallowed up in victory because it has lost its sting, for Jesus himself has disarmed it. Jesus has flattened the deadly curve, and so it can no longer harm you. This is what the disciples learn as they peer into the empty tomb, that Jesus has taken the chaos of death and ordered it. He has subjected it to himself and folded it up neatly on his three-day bed. But beyond that revelation, there was nothing more in the empty tomb for them. Life was waiting outside. That life was also waiting for Mary. She needed to see him, and hear him, and touch him. And then she needed to go and tell everybody else. That last part, telling everybody else. That was particularly important to Jesus on Easter morning, which means it is important to us. After all, it was only a few people who were there that morning, much like this morning. And even those were late. But as it turns out, this is not as big a problem as we might think. Because Jesus knows full well how to bring his resurrection from one place to every place. Though the good news of Jesus' resurrection for you is always better compared to medicine, nevertheless, he has designed it to be infectious. It is airborne. It travels at the speed of sound and then through wires and pixels at the speed of light. It springs off the pages of his word and splashes onto children. It breaks into locked rooms and hardened hearts and lies hidden under bread and wine. And the only way to protect yourself from it is to plug up your ears and close your eyes. Distance alone will not do. You must refuse to see and refuse to hear and refuse to live in the new world that Christ has thrown open before you. The gospel and the new life it brings really is that infectious. For even on the first day of the new week and the new world, the spread was exponential. It went from one, dear Mary Magdalene, to three, adding Peter and John, to ten, that's all the remaining disciples minus Thomas who would catch it from them later. And 50 days on, 
When Peter preaches on Pentecost, there is a full-on outbreak as the small troop of those carrying this novel life inside of them spread it by orders of magnitude. And 3,000 were infected with Jesus' resurrection in a single day. And ever since then, the church has only grown and never shrank. A happy byproduct, which is simply what happens when you have a demographic that never truly dies. And this is what the model demonstrates most clearly. The growth of the kingdom of God, the spread of the resurrection infection, is a steep and upward slope shaped like Mount Zion. And it involves you. So sing loudly, every one of you, wherever you are, this morning of this new day, in this new and redeemed and beautiful world. Sing with your brothers and sisters in Christ, with the ones you see and the ones you don't. Join your voice with dear Joni's. She hasn't stopped singing since she died her little death on Monday, Thursday. And sing with Mary Magdalene. And Peter and John and all the witnesses of the resurrection, let the vaults of heaven and earth resound. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. All glory to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have fulfilled your word and brought your holy servant Jesus, our Lord and God, through death to resurrection. His resurrection is proof positive that he has defeated sin, death, and the devil on the cross. Let this news of redemption spread far and wide that the joy of the Easter gospel would be received in faith throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All thanksgiving to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have adopted us into your divine family through the sacrament of holy baptism. Baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, we have died to sin and risen to new life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would live lives of daily repentance and faith, ever clinging to Jesus, our living Redeemer, for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, unite in joy all your holy churches gathered to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and give comfort and assurance to all who are life isolated that in the communion of all your saints they raise with angels, archangels, and the whole church in heaven on, and on earth the song of Christ's victory. Put an end to all division and false doctrine. Raise up preachers and singers in every place to shout this good news and sing alleluias without end. Make the name of Jesus heard in every corner of the earth this glad day. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, you have given our risen Lord all dominion over the works of your hands. Grant that all who bear earthly authority would exercise their offices with humility, restraint, and integrity for the well-being of all and for the preservation of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we implore you to visit those who are caring for our sick, for the sick themselves, for the suffering, the homebound, the grieving, and all who stand in need, especially Regina, Ron, Jin Soon, Elizabeth, Susan, Rita, Norma, and Charlie, for Marilyn, Betty, Rennell, Lee, Pauline, Diane, and Mary. In all their trials, comfort them with the knowledge that their Redeemer lives and that nothing can separate them from the love you have for them in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, bless those who approach the holy altar on this day, that they would receive the mystery of your Son's very body and blood in repentance and faith, and to their abundant blessing. Give comfort and certainty for those who long for your supper and believe your Son's holy testament, that they may know that they have what Christ says, forgiveness of sins and life forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way of eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us, that our Redeemer lives and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
is truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.